October really is the month of change across the United States and the northern hemisphere as we move farther away from summer and get closer to winter. Not only do we have the outlook for you for the temperatures and the potential for precipitation across the United States, but we still have to talk about the tropics in October as well. It has been a very, very active season. We still have two months left to go and we only have four more names left on the hurricane season list. Now, should we get past Whitney, the next name up would be from a supplemental name list, which we haven't had to use since 2020. Now, the last two months of the hurricane season do typically feature a decrease in the amount of tropical activity in the Atlantic Basin, but there are some pitfalls to watch out for. The peak of the hurricane season, climatologically speaking, is early to mid September, and then we kind of go on that downward trend, but there's a little bit of a secondary peak, usually in the middle of October, where we see another kind of rash, potentially, of tropical storms and hurricanes. Not to say that that's going to happen this year, but it is always something every October that we have to look out for. And during the month of October, we have to take a look a lot closer to home. Instead of seeing those long Cape Verde storms that move off of Africa and then just move westward, most of the tropical activity, uh, the origins of where tropical storms and hurricanes form in the month of October is a lot closer to home, especially around the Gulf of Mexico and the east coast of the United States. Now, track wise, any sort of tropical systems that typically form in this main area of development in October, they typically move from the Western Caribbean up into the Gulf of Mexico and especially close to Florida and any storms that form off the coast of the eastern United States typically don't make landfall fall because they get swept up by cold fronts. But uh, again, you can see the prevailing track puts the eastern coast of the United States and all the way up into Canada kind of in that danger zone. Uh, again, there is no sort of indication right now that we're going to be able to get through the entirety of the hurricane name list, but it is something we're going to watch out for. So tropics aside, what's going to happen across the continent of the United States during the month of October? Well, we have to take a look at the jet stream. Uh, this is the jet stream on October 1st, and you can see it is much, much uh, farther south than it usually is during the summertime months. Traditionally, summertime, the jet streams all the way up into Canada. But now that it's starting to sink southward, that is a sign that the seasons are changing. The jet stream is one of the main drivers of the weather across the United States during the fall months and also during the springtime months. And we're going to start out October with a big ridge of high pressure across the central and eastern U.S. That is one of the reasons why we have this big drop in the jet stream. But that that ridge of high pressure is also going to help to block uh, this storm system, which is going to be west of the Rocky Mountains to start off the month from moving too far east too fast. Eventually, though, that drop in the jet stream does reach the central plains by the middle of the first week of October. And by the end of the first week of October, that the jet stream is going to be across the eastern United States. That is a storm system. So we will start to see more frequency of these storm systems. The jet stream will most likely, as we move through the month of October, continue continue to drop across the United States, bringing higher rain chances and eventually some cooler temperatures. But the overall outlook for the month of October is still pretty hot for a good chunk of the country. And one of the reasons why is we are starting off the month so hot. Temperature on October 1st of 87 degrees up in Minneapolis, 90 degrees in Lincoln, uh, mid 90s in Texas and down into the Gulf Coast. So a very, very hot start. And it's going to take some time to kind of chip away at all of the heat across the country. But that first big storm system by October 6th, the first Friday of the month, you'll see a, a big difference across the country. But even still 72 degrees up in Bismarck. That's way too warm for this time of the year. As we take a look at the temperature outlook for the entirety of the month of October, with the jet stream especially expected to be uh, dropping across the western half of the country, uh, the temperature odds of uh, the temperatures being below normal or above normal is pretty much the same. So that's why there's this big hole from Salt Lake City all the way into the Plain States. But especially for the east coast of the U.S., we are expecting a good chance of warmer than normal temperatures during the month of October. And as far as rainfall goes, we are also expecting a 
pretty good chance of an above normal amount of precipitation from Kansas down into Texas and into the Four Corners region. Also stretching all the way to the mid Atlantic as well. It's not a super high chance of above normal amounts of precipitation for the month, but it is definitely something that is much, much needed, especially for the Plain States. Uh, this is a look at the drought monitor kind of overlaid on the chances of precipitation and a lot of the worst drought, especially in Texas, the desert southwest and across the central plains is where we are expecting a good chance of above normal precipitation for the month of October. You can see though a lot of work needs to be done, especially in Louisiana, Mississippi and Texas.